Have you ever heard of a walking stick? I don't mean a cane that you use for walking. I mean a walking stick that you use for walking. We did a video a few weeks back on how to use a stick, like a, a short stick, Filipino stick fighting stick for self-defense. And I uh, got some really cool feedback. Again, it's part of our Self-Defense 101 series, so it's nothing fancy. It was just very, very basic stuff that how you could use something that's pretty easy to find wherever you are to pick up and use it as a means to defend yourself if you needed to. And uh, some of the comments that came in were asking for self-defense using a cane, and others came in asking for a walking stick. And at first I was like, you mean like, like Gandalf? Like a wizard? You shall not pass! I was like, ah, I want one of those, like for shooting laser beams and whatever. But, uh, then I thought of the people that I know that use walking sticks and they're predominantly woodsmen. I don't know if I'm allowed to say woodsmen, woods people. Uh, people that go out in the woods and they don't use it just for balance and walking. They use it like some really cool walking sticks out there with, with markings on it, like uh, for measurement, like catching a fish and seeing how, how big the fish is or, uh, you know, maybe trying to get something off a, a tree, like maybe that's some fruit I could eat or, or oh, it's a vine I could pull down and use a tie, use it for cordage or something. Um, and other times, maybe I'm, before I cross a creek, I'm going to put this in to see how deep it is before I step into it. And uh, again, those were the ones who were asking me for, how do you use one of these things for self-defense? So that's what we're working on today. Stick with me. What's up, warriors? It's Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training, here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you found your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops and you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. So if you're one of the people that uses a walking stick either as a daily, you know, uh, tool or, or piece of assistance or piece of everyday carry, uh, or you're a woodsman that you use it when you go out in the woods, whatever stick you're using as a walking stick, I'd recommend that you use that to practice the skills we're going to do today. Um, again, different people use different size walking sticks, so whatever you use is what you should practice with. If you don't have the room inside your house or inside your room or wherever you are, I'd go outside before I start, start flailing that thing around and uh, you'll be watching some videos on, it, on how to fix a sheetrock and stuff like that otherwise. So just be careful, okay? I'm going to use the four foot staff because it's a little bit more challenging, believe it or not. It's easier to handle. But for some of the things that you would use a longer stick for self-defense, um, it's more challenging because you need to shift your hands around a lot more to use the side that you want to use for striking. But I'll show you what I mean and I'll show you how it becomes a little bit easier with a longer stick. So with most weapons, and again, I'm sure there's, you know, you watch different videos from different arts and different instructors and everybody's going to have a different way of doing it. For our self-defense 101 purposes, I'm going to show you the real simple way that I learned it, the real simple way that I teach it, and especially the way I teach it to somebody who's brand new at this stuff. So if you're a righty, you're going to put your right side forward, your right hand palm up, and your left hand palm down. Now some arts will teach both hands in the same direction, uh, whether it's palm down or palm up. I learned it as one and one, so that if somebody, if I was using it to block, or somebody was to strike and to knock it, out of the grip of one of my hands, the other hand should stay on there and I could hopefully catch it and still use it. If a strike were coming up and were to break it free from my grip, hopefully my other grip would stay on, I could catch it and still use it to defend myself. Make sense? So again, the way I do it is I hold it one hand up, one hand down, palm up, palm down. And I do it so that my strong or dominant side is palm up and my other one is palm down. Remember that all the skills that we do, you need to practice both righty and lefty because you need to be ambidextrous with this stuff in the event that you needed to defend yourself to another side or it did get knocked out of your hand and you had to hold it in the other way that you can't say, hold on, time out, I only know how to do it this way. You got to kind of be ambidextrous with this. So the first thing is going to be our grip. If you're a righty, right hand palm up, left hand palm down. I hold it typically about shoulder width apart. Um, and I'm always going to try and have more of this stick on the striking end or blocking end or the forward end. So if I'm facing Bob um, and I just pick it up like this, there's not a whole lot of stick on either side. I could use it to thrust, but I would rather slide down to about shoulder width apart with some stick on the bottom that I could use for grabbing, that I could use for striking, that I could use to poke through. but I really want enough stick that I could use it more like a sword than like a stick, if that makes sense. 
first things first, get my grip, make sure that I have a comfortable width, width, width <laughs> between my hands. Um, and then both legs are a little bit bent. I'm gonna have my dominant side forward, my dominant hand forward, and the front of the stick or the top of the stick, I keep it where I'm looking at you over the top of the stick where this is just below my eyes. And I try to keep it centered like, uh, like in line with my nose. So if you were to attack something that's coming along this side of the stick, I could very simply kind of parry your attack. If something was coming along this side, I could kind of parry the attack. So very small, subtle movement that I could not just use it for a guard, but use it for basic blocking. And again, the most simplest thing is just like tap, 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 tap. So again, if his hand is coming on this side of the stick, I just kind of knock it away. If his, hand, if his hand was coming on this side of the stick, I'm gonna tap it this way. And I always try to return to my guard. If I swing too far away, well, man, it has to come all the way back. So I try to keep my blocks and my parries nice and short. Now, just like I said, you need to be able to uh, do this either side forward. If you're gonna have your stance, you have to be able to switch your stance or to go from facing one side to facing the other. Now, if I just turn, now my guard is protecting like this side of my head, but if the threat is coming from that side, I need to get this up. Now there are ways to like kind of lift the rear of the, the stick, to block with the stick, thrust with the stick, poke with the stick. But if I were to switch my guard altogether, the way I kind of transition from a righty stance to a lefty stance, and this takes a little bit of practice. You could just let go, switch hands, adjust your grip, right? Uh, let go, switch hands, adjust your grip. Let go, switch hands, adjust your grip. Let go, switch hands, adjust your grip. A quicker, smoother, it's a little bit more challenging to learn it, but once you know it, it's much easier. And what I do is I kind of open both my hands. I'm hooking with my thumbs just for now, but really what I do is I, I it's hard for me to do this slow. I open both my hands, I flip the bow, uh, the staff, and I kind of slide both my hands in opposite directions at the same time. Uh, I usually teach the beginners, like we'll hold it like this, and I just say, open and slide, open and slide, open and slide, open and slide, open and slide. Hey, another thing is if you're a walking stick, is rough and is splintery. Um, I'd either use gloves or I would give that a good sanding. Uh, maybe use some like linseed oil or some sort of oil to like uh, moisten your, your uh, walking stick a little bit because if it's dry and brittle and splintery, this is a, a recipe for disaster. So just be careful with that, okay? So again, if I'm gonna switch sides, I switch like, I don't just look, I kinda open my grips, flip the stick, and slide my hands so this one slides down as this one slides up and as they kind of pass each other I tighten my grip and that's what's gonna change my grip change my stance I'm facing this way facing this way facing this way facing this way switch turn switch turn switch turn that same concept could be used for like sometimes you like when you get into blocking and stuff you're gonna kind of hand change to a as you're advancing your stance or retreating your stance or moving around, then you need to switch hands without letting go and uh, taking your hands off for a longer period of time. You want it to be a quick thing where you could kind of like change your mind and tighten up your grip on the stick at any time. If your walking stick is something more like a bow staff, which is like around your height or, or taller or around your height, well, I try to keep two thirds on the striking end and one third on the blocking end or not striking end. A lot of the techniques are the same, like I could strike with the back part or the bottom part. I could strike, poke, strike. There's all sorts of really cool combinations. So I have striking with this side, but if I need to strike with the bottom side, I basically shift the stick in my hands. I pull it, then I slide the other hand up so I have two thirds on the bottom end, so I could use that for striking the head, striking the leg getting to a position where I could like wind up and really thrust with the bottom or strike somebody behind me. This way, So again, this motion right here, a hand shift, that's how I learned it. <laughs> I think that's what I learned it as. That's what I call it now. I'm not sure if that's what I learned it as. So not just a hand change, but a hand shift, which especially with a shorter stick, um, 
I could still hit with the top, but for me to hit with the bottom, uh oh, there's nothing there. So what I do is I hit with the top side, I slide it, like open up my hands, slide my other hand, and now the bottom side becomes my striking side. Make sense? All right, so real simple. You got your stance, you got your guard and your grip, you have your basic hand change, you have your basic hand shift, you have your basic parry, like for blocking. If something was coming like lower, you could invert it by just kind of turning it upside down and parrying very similar the same way. You could also block, bring it back up. You could block, strike, poke, strike. Now, the way those strikes work are very simple. Uh, again, similar to using a sword, down, down. So I'm not even changing my grip, I'm just changing the angle of my attack. Slice down on one collarbone, slice down on the other collarbone, and again, Without going into the intricacies of a strike, this is the basic, basic way to do it. Hold it, wind up, and strike. You have your pokes as well, right? But you could also poke from the bottom end. So you might block with the bottom, like I just bring the hand across, poke with the bottom, strike with the top. So again, I kind of like slide my grip so that I'm able to hit with this. Loose grip so that I can poke, adjust, strike. Block, poke, strike. Now your strikes could be downward, could be across, could be like downward to the legs, upward to the face, upward to the groin. The simpler, the better. You also have your pokes. And remember that a poke is gonna be more like a jab. It's not designed to be very powerful. It's designed more to be like quick, and a, a stun type of move. Whereas a thrust, similar to like a back fist, I'm gonna kinda use tight grip, both hands, wide stance, I whip the hip, the hip pulls the torso, torso, and we strike through. Your most basic striking techniques are gonna be like striking, sword style, not, it's not baseball style, my hands are not close together. Again, I try to keep them about shoulder width. Uh, definitely not together because there's a lot of wobble in the swing. A little wider, better control. Also, if I meet resistance, it's like it's hard for me to push if my hands are close together. Whereas my hands are wider apart, I use leverage to help drive power through or to break balance. Again, your poke and your thrust. Your poke, your thrust. Ooh. Your parry, your parry, your parry and hook, your parry and hook, your parry to poke, to strike, to thrust. I love this stuff, man. I love it. Again, so remember, this is like self defense 101 stuff. There could be a whole series of videos on the intricacies of using a bow or a Joe or uh, any sort of like staff or wooden stick for uh, self-defense purposes. But for those of you that are asking like, you know, uh, self-defense with a walking stick? Yeah, I mean, of course you could use it. The idea is you want to go with like your level of understanding, skill, fitness, strength, coordination, all that type of stuff. And the best thing that I could tell you is Start simple, start easy. Start in the backyard, the driveway, or, or uh, you know, wherever the neighbors are not gonna think you're, you're nuts swinging that thing around. Or the next time you're in the woods, just be careful you don't hurt yourself, especially if you're out there by yourself. Like, I usually go out in the woods by myself and I gotta be extra careful because there's nobody coming to save me, it's just me. So, uh, that being said, hey, practice some of the stuff. If you got questions, ask. If there's a way that I could help you, of course I will. And if you're into it, go down the rabbit hole, man. Whatever video YouTube is suggesting, go check it out. And you'll start to find like instructors that you like, techniques that make sense, techniques that seem like feasible and doable and like realistic for you to learn. I mean, I'm not gonna say go watch the Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles, cause that's Hollywood, man. And not that it doesn't work, but I'm big on offensive, aggressive, effective. Your first thought should be like, how do I get out of this without having a fight? Um, but if you have to fight, you got to win, right? And the, you want the techniques that you throw, like, man, and once the fight starts, I'm, I'm coming for you. Like, it's got to be offensive. I've got to take the attack because otherwise, if you wait and you give them the chance to attack, 
Uh, they might connect and, and you, you, that's a bad spot. Aggressive, once you're attacking, make sure you keep moving forward, keep bringing the fight to them. And effective, like you could watch stuff that works, you know, one or two or three times out of 10 or seven, eight, nine times out of 10, because nothing works 10 out of 10. But if I have my choice between something that's gonna work a few times out of 10 or a lot of times out of 10, give me the stuff that's gonna be way more effective. Offensive, keep attacking. Aggressive, keep moving forward. Effective, stick to the stuff that works. That's, that's my two cents. Um, and if you got questions, ask. If you got a better way to do it, tell me. If uh, you got suggestions or whatever, I've been doing it a long time, but I am by no means a master. I'm still a student too. Well, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you gotta have it, make sure you hit the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find me on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.